for the gracious promise that as we do so, you will meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us to refocus our lives just as our Lord Jesus Christ focused his life. How he was able to say as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but thine be done. Oh, how we pray that in every area of life we might be able to say as his people, not my will, but yours be done. And our Father, as we now come to the table of our Lord, how we are so thankful and grateful that this was our Lord's attitude. And that as a result, he went to the cross. He died on that cross to pay the penalty for our sins and to satisfy your justice. That we might have his righteousness. That we might have eternal life. So, Father, as we gather around this table, we celebrate, we remember, we proclaim the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, help us now as we gather around his table and we remember what he has done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we come to the table of our Lord, let's remember that uh, this is a table of fellowship. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, there's a reason why it's called communion. Communion simply means fellowship. It's a reminder to us that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. We belong to him. We are, uh, belong to the family of God. And when we gather around this table, we are reaffirming our relationship with God and we are remembering how we came into that relationship with our God. Now there's two parts to the table, two things that we do. We take of the bread and then we take of the cup. The bread, of course, reminds us of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and the cup reminds us of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we partake of the uh, bread, Let's remember that Jesus took on flesh. And the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ took on flesh was so that he might be our substitute. That he might die in our place. That he might pay the penalty for our sins. That he might satisfy the holy wrath of God against us. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread that reminds us of the Lord Jesus Christ. How we thank you, our Father, that he was willing to surrender his glory, to set it aside in order that he might take on flesh. So that for the, for the purpose of uh, dying in our place by uh, becoming our substitute taking upon himself all of our sins, past, present, and future, and giving to us all of his righteousness. Oh, what a glorious, wonderful Savior we have. We thank you, our Father, for this bread, which reminds us of our Lord's sacrifice, his willingness to give up his life for ours. So, Father, we ask you to bless this bread as we take it together. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we read these words from the scriptures. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let us partake together. Now the second element of which we partake is the cup. Of course the cup symbolizes the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this should remind us brothers and sisters that the Bible is very clear that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. And why does the Bible say that? The Bible clearly tells us that the life is in the blood. 
A life had to be given. The life of our Lord Jesus Christ was surrendered for ours. Our life. His life becomes our life. This is, this is what this cup symbolizes. So let us uh, give God thanks for the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the cup which reminds us of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he willingly surrendered on the cross. He gave his life in order that we who were dead might live. How we thank you, our Father, for the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. How we thank you that even now as we uh, are around this table and remembering what our Lord has done, that we possess his very life in us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh, our Father, we are so blessed. We thank you for this cup which reminds us of what our Lord has done for us. Thank you for his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the scriptures tell us, for as um, in the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us partake together. The Apostle Paul goes on to say, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Well, brothers and sisters, I trust that you've been blessed and encouraged this morning. Trust that as you remember our Lord Jesus Christ looking to heaven, praying on our behalf, that this might be an encouragement to you to redouble your efforts to pray as you refocus your life on doing the will of God. How thankful we can be as we come to this table. What a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ who so single-mindedly in his life focused on doing the will of his Father, and which brought him to the cross on our behalf. We're here today because of him. Well, may God bless you. May God encourage you this coming week as you walk with him. Join us as we sing our last song, Jesus, Thank You.
be called your friend now, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for today. Thank you for the reminder of the importance of prayer. And we pray that you will give us the strength and the grace to be able to be more diligent in our prayer life, Lord, to look to you for your will in our lives. And we pray this all in your Son's Jesus' name. Amen.